Recently televised, the Shogun finale offered an ending that was greater than I could have ever imagined and well worth the wait. I became interested in researching the actual historical individuals further and figuring out what happened after we left this show because the novel, the 80s miniseries, and this show all kind of ended at the same time. Naturally, we saw the Battle of Sekigahara in the flash forward, but what happened next? What became of the winner, loser, and numerous other characters who stayed in Edo and Osaka? I had intended to respond precisely to that. Let us thus begin. These historical occurrences followed Shogun. A heads up that there will be spoilers in this video. Sekigahara battle and Ishido's demise many viewers had hoped to see this battle in the series, and we were treated to snippets of it in Torunaga's speech to Yabushaj. About the actual battle of Sekigahara, it was a pivotal conflict that determined who would win the Eastern Army under Iyasu Tokugawa or the Western Army under Ishida Matsunari. Remarkably, Tokugawa had more troops fighting by the time the Battle of Sekigahara rolled around. At the beginning, Tokugawa had 75,000 men, whereas Ishida had 120,000. But Ishida had 81,000 and Daiyasu Tokugawa had 88,000 when they met on the battlefield. This was for a multitude of reasons. One was that Tokugawa had actually been chatting to daimyos who had pledged allegiance to Ishida and promised them land if they would change their allegiances, which some of them did, along with many of Rashida's men up to 20,000. A few of them wished to stay out of the fighting and not pledge allegiance to either of the factions in order to survive. That was something that quickly altered even though Ishida Musanari began with far larger numbers. That indicated that the, the cards were stacked against him. Regarding the Battle of Sekigahara, Iyasu Tokugawa and the Eastern Army were victorious when they overthrew the defensive line that Ishida had established and many daimyos shifting allegiances turned against Ishida. This meant that he had to withdraw as it shifted the balance of the conflict. Ishida himself fled the battlefield when the Western Army collapsed and he essentially had no more assistance. He was hanged in Kyoto after being discovered by some locals after escaping. Later, everyone in Kyoto could see his head on public display. Though time served the historical character well, Ishida Mutsunari was not highly remembered in the history books. Though for him it was simply not meant to be, it is thought that if people had stayed faithful to him and not been so eager to swap sides, he may have truly had a chance of winning on the battlefield and changing history totally. After Shogun, whatever became to the real John Blackthorn? Regarding John Blackthorn, William Adams is the genuine historical figure. As we left him in the program, he was given the task of helping to construct Japan's first Western-style ship, which was eventually finished and weighed around 80 tons. Adams then had to construct a 120-ton ship the following year. About the other crew members William brought to Japan, most of them were permitted to leave the country at some point, and in 1605 they made the decision to do so. William Adams was finally named by the Shogun as a diplomatic and commercial counsellor after the latter had come to trust him and he later became his personal advisor on all matters pertaining to the West. William Adams demonstrated his learning of the language, acceptance of the culture, and total transformation from his initial perception by becoming the official interpreter. He would dress in Japanese clothes, and when additional Englishmen eventually arrived in Japan, he would rather be among the Japanese people. He was no longer the barbarian. Eventually, he was also allowed to enter the palace whenever he liked, and to communicate with Iyasu Tokugawa as and when he needed. Tokugawa respected Adams, but unlike many of the other crew members, he never actually let him leave the nation. William sent money to his English wife, even though he was not permitted to depart. Because he didn't have to do that, but he did, I think it revealed a very intriguing aspect of the character. Even though he had a wife and kids back home in England, he finally wed someone else in Japan, where he had two more kids, one daughter and one boy. William expressed in the letters his great admiration and concern for the Japanese people and their culture. Blackthorn called the people in Japan savages in one of his first remarks on the show after arriving there. But he developed to respect and comprehend them during the show, and that attitude transformed. It makes sense then why we observe that change in the character. William helped to establish trading rights and passes that linked to other countries in addition to the relationship building he conducted with Tokugawa. As such, William Adams was a significant Tokugawa shogunate official. At 55 years old, William Adams passed away north of Nagasaki on May 16, 1620. How come Toronaga was abandoned? Tokugawa I one fascinating incident involving Tokugawa is his leadership of the siege of Osaka Castle. The true Lady Ochiba no Kata and the heir to the previous taker were housed in Osaka Castle, which he intended to seize. There was a failed attempt in 1614 to draft a peace treaty, 
but in 1915 Tokugawa demonstrated that the treaty was not worth the paper it was written on. He stormed the castle, and with Osaka Castle in flames, Yoridono or Lady Ochibanakata and Hidori both committed seppuku, ending the Toyotomi legacy, the name that the former Taiko passed down. As such, Lady Ochibanakata's allegiance in the FX series was meaningless in real life. The one danger Tokugawa saw to his total control and dominance as the dominant clan in Japan was the opposition to his rule uniting around the former Taiko-san, whom they believed to be the legitimate heir. At 60 years old, Tokugawa became shogun, and the Tokugawa shogunate he established would eventually govern Japan for the following 260 years. Only a short while later, in 1605, Tokugawa resigned as shogun, and his son took over. There are other conjectures behind his resignation, but some of them suggest that he might have wished to facilitate the selection of his preferred successor, of which his son was. Yasu Tokugawa's power was not really affected by his resignation. Iyasu remained a force even after his son took up the title of shogun. He was merely now assuming the role of retiring shogun. 73 years old, Iyasu Tokugawa passed away in 1616. Either syphilis or cancer is believed to have killed him. Death to Yabushaj never happened. Regarding Yabushaj's death, regrettably, that never really happened in real life, even though it was one of the best scenes in the finale. Yabushaj's historical model, Honda Masanobu, passed away in 1616 the same year as Iyasu Tokugawa did. In considering why Yabushaj was assigned this made-up betrayal storyline, I believe it may have something to do with the fact that Masanabu supported the peasants during the Wani 563 rebellion against Iyasu Tokugawa. He fled, nonetheless, and a few decades later, he joined Iyasu. In the end, he also fought with the Eastern Army and Iyasu Tokugawa in Sekigahara. I therefore believe that the betrayal that occurred was most likely motivated by the fact that Masanobu was first against Tokugawa before later siding with him. Shogun ended without offering us that last chapter, hence it didn't offer closure or clarity in the conventional sense. Everything about it revolved around us getting inside Toronaga's head and witnessing what he was doing to become Shogun. We never saw Shogun turn into the conclusion, rather it was only the beginning. It is amazing to consider that Tokugawa established a clan that lasted for a quarter of a millennium during his lengthy tenure as both retired and active shogun. I would like to encourage everyone to try and learn a little bit more about these historical figures who we saw portrayed on screen over the course of a few months since their stories are really fascinating to read about. And I believe you have a fresh respect for them, the era, and who they were after seeing the performance. Here are then the historical occurrences that followed shogun. To view other videos about Shogun, click the card in the upper right. I have dissected every episode of the show and gone into each historical person individually. Visit the channel to view further footage from the show. Regarding Shogun, what were your impressions? Tell me what you think in the space provided for comments below. I appreciate you watching the video as usual, and I'll see you in the next one.